Wait, why were your cabinets open? Uh, because I was snack walking. <laughs> <laughs> I went into my kitchen the other night, stoned, got like got kind of got out of bed, and I was like, "Whoa, I need some water." And I got I walked into the kitchen, and I leave the lights on right now at home at while night. while you're sleeping at night. Well, I do. Yeah. I've, I've been leaving the lights on because you watch Hereditary every single night. Because I don't know, like Archie's been kind of weird at night lately, and I've just been like aware that I don't know. I live alone and I don't, it's like a comfort thing right now. I'm leaving some lights on at night and I walked into my very brightly lit kitchen and every cabinet door was open. I was like, fuck, do I have a fucking poltergeist too? To boot? To boot? <laughs> on top of everything else in a- life, I have a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, I was just, it was me. I was snack walking. I had walked into the kitchen high, opened every cabinet to see what I had, <laughs> found something. <laughs> Went back to bed and ate it. Uh, but the next time I came into the kitchen, yeah, it was, I scared myself. <laughs> <laughs> what you shit I've ever heard? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, I think I'm what's freaking Archie out. Yeah, you're the ghost. <laughs> yeah, I am my own ghost. <laughs> what up, Mary Jane? <laughs> How's it going, Mike? Oh, man, awesome. How are you? I'm great. I'm stoned and happy. Cool. Yeah. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Culture. Cooking. Calling shit out. And uh, ghosts. Ghosts. Calamity. <laughs> Calamity ghosts. Comedy ghosts. Comedy ghosts. Ghosts of all kinds. Yeah. Yeah. When you're your own ghost. Man. Yeah. I wonder what snack you found. Um, I think it might have been that ice cream that I found in the freezer. So it was weird that I opened all the cabinets first. But the ice cream that I was telling you and Carmen about yeah. that I ate in bed. I think that's what I was looking for. That's a good foreshadow because yeah. our talk with Carmen today is so much fun <laughs> and it's so silly and so laughy. Yeah. And yeah. like that ice cream bit was fantastic. I, <laughs> I I do know what I was. I have a few snacks that I look for when I'm stoned and it's late at night and I've like probably already brushed my teeth, but I just want that last little bite and then I'll like do a light brush. Uh-huh. You know, I'm not going to eat a bowl of pasta that's going to require a full brush. Right. I'm going to eat something that I can like kind of not touch my teeth with a whole lot and then just do the light brush. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Any I just dental hygienist listening it. is like, no. A light brushing? I a think light. is so wise. A second light brush. Right. Especially because if it's your last snack, you want a clean palate for that final bite. Right. So like a light brushing kind of resets the system for that final meal. Totally. <laughs> so yeah, so I have a few things that I look for. Um, the Cacio e Pepe cheese puffs from Trader Joe's. Amazing. Big late night snack right oh, now. Can I also compliment them as a like as a pre brush snack? Yes. Or like a pre the brush yeah. snack. Uh-huh. Uh, they're great because they're that airy, corny thing. So you can suck them down yes. one at a time and they kind of dissolve on the tongue so that the teeth don't necessarily get involved at all at moments. You can totally put one right, uh, like do that with your tongue and put it right in the middle of your tongue and just let it evaporate. That is so true. You're yeah. so right. It's a great tiny brush snack. Yeah. A crunch free cheese puff, just an evaporation situation. I bet we could do that with sumo too. I got to try that with the sumo, the weed infused cheese puffs. Yeah. I've never tried to let one evaporate on my tongue and they're the they are like a cheeto puff so it absolutely will do that like crispy dissolve yeah the classic cheese puff i think would do a dissolve on the tongue the crunchy ones would be um you can't have those and then not brush your teeth you gotta brush agreed especially the cool ranch yep but (laughs) i will say like sucking down 10 milligrams of potato chip without needing to brush my teeth it (laughs) sounds amazing it's perfect they're a daytime snack for me that i've Love them. I mean, I could eat 10 bags and also go to bed, but I like them. I like them for a lunchtime snack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sumo rocks. My nighttime snack, though, I will say, so the, the cheese puff situation is a possibility. Also, I weirdly have an affinity, and I don't know what the hell is wrong with me, but I really like these um, beef jerky sticks from Trader Joe's that are called Chomps. And Ooh. it's like a protein hit. I don't know. I think I'm like a cave person. Do you ever, did you ever hear about that cave people diet yeah. you know when it was like your blood type or whatever i think the, i'm the i was like the not the hunter gatherer i was the go out and like whack things on the head and then eat them oh, i thought you person. meant you have like jerky blood oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that too <laughs> i just i want like i i sometimes will just like crave a protein hit more than i would crave an ice cream or like anything really like i just want like a hard-boiled egg or like a piece of meat wow so, yeah yeah you're the go out and club person yeah absolutely well, maybe it's also just because i have my period <laughs> sorry know. if that's gross but what? you know well, you like my um dietary 
desires uh, change depending on where I am in my cycle. Really? Any woman can relate. I didn't know that. Do you have that at all? Um, depending on your like... I think it's more anxiety and stress. Nothing like chemical that I was born with that happens every single month. Right, because I guess you don't have a monthly cycle of mm. any kind. Ex- no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute undisciplined mess. No, I just wonder like if there is, if anyone has ever looked into whether or not men also have some kind of monthly cycle. I think I must in some kind of way, only because... We're all in relation to the moon. Yeah, right. right. And it does feel like every like month and a half to two and a half months, mm-hmm. I'm just like so low that I may as well be under the stairs. Oh, I was just about to laugh. I'm so sorry. Oh, why? Well, I thought you were going to make a werewolf joke, but... Oh, why didn't I do that? Now I'm interrupting you actually being serious. So, yeah, sorry. S- sorry that my heart was open and the comedy wasn't oh, coming out. God, I and it just... made you nervous because I was being too real. I shivved myself on that one. I'm so <laughs> sorry. No, wait, I want to hear though. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I would say so. Like every one, month and a half to two and a half months, I'll, I'll um, you know, it's where your bed is a table and you're yeah. eating your meals on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, there's some cycle there. But I and so maybe so that would change my dietary needs because that's like a whole Domino's pizza and uh, side of wings. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, that cycle. I feel like you and I are pretty much in recognition of when both of us have that. Sometimes that cycle aligns for us and we're both like we'll be together with the wings. My sadness in your period. Yeah. Yeah. Be, <laughs> I know. Or, that. or sometimes just my sadness, too. But there will be like a night where we just are in sync and we both know that we want to order wings and get really, really stoned and watch something incredibly stupid together and then sometimes i know that you do that for yourself separately and i do that for myself as well but what happens when you are on your period what does your what is your hunger for chomps yeah like mad protein meat like, yeah steak tartare and yeah for Raw sure meat. Like hard-boiled eggs and just like yeah protein so that i can like you know rebuild to bring life into the world <laughs> or whatever the fuck that is 100 percent. i bet that yeah. is some kind of evolutionary Definitely. survival for sure yeah i mean we're bleeding you know it's crazy like i was just watching who was it who has this great bit about a, um is it i can't remember what comedian it is but there's a woman who's doing a bit a whole bit about her period and about how she, like the deal is that the pain level of a period is like having a heart attack and she has this whole very funny bit about is it ali wong no Fuck, I'll have to look it up and I'll get back to you on who it is. And I don't want to say any of what she says, but it's like it's an incredible long sustained bit because do you know who it is, Mark? Oh, fuck. Anyway, it's she's great. And I will find it out. And I'll tell you next week who that is, because it's really worth looking into, especially like because there's just not that much period comedy. That's like, I think for like it's not just about like, oh, you can relate because you're a woman. Anyway, I don't need to talk about it anymore. Sorry. But good period comedy is something that is tough to execute. Like good period comedy. That I will laugh at. And it, that pe- uh, people will laugh at. Right. Like yeah. good abortion jokes or yeah. good rape jokes or any of the things that are like, these are facts of life as women on the planet that we want to point at and look at and laugh at. But it's so hard to do right, especially to have like guys be able to join in. 100%. You know? Yeah. Without me like looking at you like, can I laugh too? Ooh, is that okay? Am is I it allowed all to right? laugh? Yeah. Am I an ally? Am I not? Like, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. You My like, laughter means it. I'm a good person. <laughs> <laughs> you stand. Why are you standing? Because I'm an ally. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, This is actually a really good time to say shout out to Top Tree Studios, where we are coming from. We've got video now. Check out our YouTube. We're going to be coming to you with great interviews like today's from Top Tree. we got producer Mark on the ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. And uh, it's just so rad that we get to do this here. Yeah, it is the raddest. We've got weed and grub laid out on this table. I cooked terrible cookies, uh, but we have better snacks than that. Thank you, Sumo, for hooking us up. (laughs) Thank God we had a backup (laughs) plan because my cookies were a failure. And uh, yeah, and shout out Houseplant. This fucking ice fog is delicious. I love Houseplant. I know, I do too. I really do. Yeah. Diablo yeah. Wind. What no is joke. this one? Ice cookies? Ice fog. Ice fog. <laughs> oh, there's a cookie next to it. <laughs> ice fog. Ice fog. Yeah. Can we get to the news? Let's get to the news. The Grubble Gazette. You're oh, bringing man. us a, a hot story this week. Yeah, I think it's really cool because it's tied into a couple of things that you turned me on to is it uh, universal recently. healthcare yep <laughs> <laughs> great today's story still don't have it all right uh that was it oh okay uh, that was about universal health care no oh. today's grubble gazette <laughs> uh is brought to you by deadline okay and the article is lady buds the cannabis documentary is going to get a scripted feature adaptation and a non-scripted series spinoff that is such good news massive 
Wow. Massive. So you turned me on to Ladybuds. Yeah. And uh, I, I have not watched it yet. I'm going to be straight up about that. But the idea that something that was made for this community by this community is now also getting m- a crazy outlets yeah. doubling down on it, film and TV. Right. Well, yes, I th- yes. I think, yeah, it was absolutely made by the community, but not for the community. It was made so people can actually see what's going on in the cannabis community. And it follows six women in California on their journeys to um, operate in the legal cannabis system. And it's wild and it's heartbreaking at times and it's uplifting at times and they are so resilient. And the portrait of each of these women is just like, it's it's really amazing. The director, uh, CJ Russo, is um, a friend of Buck Angel's, actually. I met uh, Chris at uh, when I was up in Santa Rosa with Buck Angel. Huge. And she's amazing. And she just did an incredible job with the film. And Michael Katz, again, a shout out, Michael. He's an executive producer on Lady Buds. And he's the one that I've mentioned several times on here. He heads up Mendocino Cannabis Alliance. Yeah. He exec produced that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huge. It's awesome. It's just a really, uh, I have seen it. And um, I highly recommend if you haven't like run out and watch it. And so then, it's on stars. Yeah. Can I read a little bit from this deadline article? For, for sure. It? Okay. So if you would like to see Lady Buds, it is on stars right now. And the way they broke it down to kind of repeat you is it tells the story of a group of women, including a Latinx, African American, LGBTQ, and seniors to navigate the world of cannabis the year before and after legalization. So just the very idea of like coming into it, having mm-hmm. all like having legalization come online and then what does that actually look like? I, and I need to see this. it's not good in some cases. Yeah, there, there's some heartbreak in there. And then mm. there's also some, you know, some hope. So that it's a it's a great snapshot of what's going on in the California cannabis scene right now, as we know. You know, you and I have talked about it so much. It's like, it's a crazy time. And everyone's having a very uh, tough time navigating all of these regulations and permits and fees and taxes and everything. So it's, it's just a really cool, um, and it's not dry at all. It's like, it's really interesting and cool and funny and behind the scenes. It's not like a, I think a lot of docs can be, you know, a little <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're smug and preachy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, not this though. Well, so here's the thing, uh, specifically for the comedy feature yeah. that it's there's going to be on it, they're calling it, it's going to be like Bridesmaids with a more diverse cast. Great. <laughs> Which is, sounds amazing. And then I wanted to read this quote from one of the producers of that movie, said, women may not be the face of cannabis, but they've always been the backbone of the culture. Before legalization, 36% of the leadership roles in the industry were held by women. That number is now down to 22. Mm. These growers are as dynamic as they are diverse, and they're truly inspiring. I'm thrilled to be bringing their story, a true and still unfolding David and Goliath tale for our lives to life on the big screen. Wow. Wow. Hell yeah. Good shit. Congratulations to the whole team and all of the women profiled in that doc. And I hope that may their stories get a lot more attention. And, um, you know, hopefully from the policymakers who uh, who are really, you know, able to affect uh, change. You know, they're the ones that we really need to be watching these stories. Yeah. Um, did you ever see the documentary that was about the uh, the mountains? It was on Netflix. A lot the, of murder. Murder, documentary- murder. Oh, um, Murder Mountain. It was Murder Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I almost said c- Carnage Cliff, and I was like, <laughs> Glazer. Homicide Hill. <laughs> um, 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 uh, uh, kill Noel. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, what's, a, what's a word for kill that starts with P? P- put them out of their m- misery peak. <laughs> It's a reach. We're going to stop. All right. I mean, where do you go after that? I never did see Murder Mountain. No. Yeah. No. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a documentary about the the Emerald Triangle, like some of the terrible things that went on during the, you know, before legalized cannabis. But I'm sure it's still happening. It's just, you know, illicit grows with people who have um, some shady uh, dealings. 100%. Right. Yeah. Um, Moving on. Sure. Cool. I... I brought sunglasses. Okay. I wanted to be... Wait, while you're getting your sunglasses, let me talk about some of the one that's not shady because it's sitting right here in front of us. Cool. And we have video, and I don't know if everyone can see, but this is the weed from uh, Bohemian Chemist, which is that uh, Mendocino grow that I visited that I've talked about a couple of times on here. And look at their packaging. It's like a cool, old-timey apothecary. Like an Edison bulb Like feel. old glass. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. And it's such great weed. And this is the Watermelon Rancher, which is one of my favorite things to smoke right now. It's just so fucking tasty. Yeah. And it's not, it doesn't pack too much of a punch. Like it gets me exactly where I want to be, but doesn't like whack me. Right. Yeah. Like it makes the third eye very open. Yeah. Without it feeling exposed. Exactly. Yeah. It makes my cheeks feel like just pink and warm. That's awesome. Yeah. It's fire. It is. And so is he. Yeah. 
Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, if you go on his website too, the architecture is oh my goodness astounding. yeah it's, it, and if you're in um that part of the world if you are ever up mendocino way um you should stop by their whole thing they have like a uh restaurant and a wine tasting room and the dispensary and it's all in this beautiful property and yeah awesome <sighs> nice yeah shout out jim at bohemian chemist all right what you got what you got i got somebody <laughs> gave me sunglasses i love show and tell this is fun now we have video we can like actually hold things up to the camera and be like look guys I'm oh I'm a sunglasses and in, in inside dude now. What is happening? This is gonna be my new vibe, Mary Jane. I, I, every time we see each other, if we go out to eat anywhere, I'm wearing sunglasses inside for the rest of my life. For anyone who is just listening to this and not watching, Mike just pulled out a pair of sunglasses that makes him look like a, an after school PSA uh, <laughs> child molester. Oh, ouch! <laughs> they are not good. Ouch! What's happening? But that's just because of the sunglasses, right? Oh, and the mustache. Oh, ah, it's shit. a mustache sunglasses combo. Damn it! <laughs> that sucks too because the whole reason I was given these is because you can take off the side, the the ear part. Yeah. And and they're hollow. Can you? So you can know. <laughs> Looks like you're trying really hard and you can't do it. And this is never going to work in front of kids. What's uh, happening? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you can do what in the arm of the thing? Supposedly, if you can take these arms oh, off. Oh, it's a stash thing? Here, let me then try. Then you can put joints inside each side of the sunglass. And you don't think a security guard is actually going to notice that the arms of these things are like triple <laughs> so wide? Big. It's like, you definitely have something hidden in there, dude. If this isn't yeah. Google Glass or like some <laughs> weird, oh, this is impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, I don't know how that works. It's a terrible invention. <laughs> I mean, the least stealthy <laughs> yeah. stash device. They look crazy. They may as well be clear. And then you can't and open say it. weed across and the you're lenses. Be standing like in the club, like trying to like fight with your glasses, and the security guard's gonna be like, uh, "Excuse me, sir, <laughs> sir." Can we confiscate? Can we just see your glasses? Yeah. Oh, you mean my sunglasses? <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, well, those are. Oh, there you go. Okay. Cool. So the beauty of it is that the directions on it too mm -hmm. um, say flatten the joint to fit it into the arm. Jesus. <laughs> Christ, what is happening? This is not a not a product that is for anyone who actually smokes weed. I know. This is a product for people. This is a novelty. It's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is good for stockings. Have you seen, do you remember, I mean, I feel like they don't exist so much anymore because legal weed is obviously like, you know, do you know two and three Americans now live in a state with legal cannabis? Whoa, that's fantastic. That's the statistic in 2022. It's amazing. So I think there's a lot less stash stealth kind of devices like coming out like there used to be um a, a series of awards at high times called the stash awards that were literally about like stealthy devices cool. i do love like a bag a smell bag yeah it I was do like love that. yeah exactly it was like smell tech and you know different ways of hiding your weed and we all used to get like stuff sent in and there would be like water bottles that you would like unscrew in the middle and that would be a, it would look like a bottle of evian but it was actually you know you put your weed in there Tight. or whatever i always just thought that was like yeah so fun i got my friend once um I got her a cane, like a, you know, a walking cane, and you unscrewed the bottom and it had seven compartments and you could put any, you know, all, all your fucking stuff in there. That's a national treasure cane. It was great. That's awesome. Yeah. What was, a cool, what a, you're a gift I guru. I was very happy with that find. I feel like a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try these on? Sure. Let's see how, <laughs> what kind of vibe I give off. PSA, right? Absolutely. Right. You have a problem with um, anyone being in the park. Yes, I am here to tell you that you should not be barbecuing. <laughs> and I'm going to get on my phone and I'm going to make sure that Hide the police the wall. know that you are barbecuing when you should not be barbecuing. <laughs> God, these things are awful. Fuck those glasses. Fuck those glasses. <laughs> they turn you into a child molester and me into a fucking racist oh, carrot. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. um, but you're supposed to be cool hiding weed? Yeah. yeah All no. Right. Nope. <laughs> God damn. We should get to Buds of the Week and then um, celebrate Carmen. Yeah, let's do it. You want to go first or second? Well, I went first last step. Do you want me to go first or second this step? I'll go first. Okay, go I want to shout out Bad Manners. Our friends Michelle and Matt over at Bad Manners. Follow them at Bad Manners Food. Or are they just at Bad Manners? Hang on. Let me get it right. They are at on Instagram, Bad Manners Food, and they are such a good follow on IG. Please also check out their podcast, Forked Up, and they have a, a video series now, and they also have a newsletter that you can sign up for, and they release like recipes all the time. Get all of their books. They're just great people. They're so funny and cool and good-hearted, and I just look up to them so much as people who are just ch making change in the world by being true to themselves and what they believe in, and they're funny as fuck, and yeah. also they're hot. 
Yeah. It's like kind of annoying, actually. Kind of total package yeah. over there. Yeah, it is part of it. Not so much a bud, <sighs> huh? Is that just a... It's just like a MV. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love you guys. Matt Michelle. Follow him at Bad, Bad Manners Food. And uh, they're my buds of the week. Great bud of the week. My bud of the week is actually in the same lane. Oh. So I wanted to shout out a restaurant called Mr. Charlie's LA, which looks like a McDonald's, but it says Mr. Charlie's and it's on North La Brea. It is all vegan, but it's like looks and weirdly tastes exactly like a McDonald's cheeseburger, exactly like a McDonald's chicken nugget, exactly like the fries. It's crazy. I almost feel like they knocked over a McDonald's food truck and just stole all of it and slapped vegan on the side. <laughs> wow. But it's not. It's like legit vegan delicious food. So shout out at Mr. Charlie's LA. And I learned about them thanks to one John Capetta inviting me to THC Design, which uh, I think we'll probably shout out a couple more times on here for some things that they are going to be doing this year. But THC Design has this awesome speakeasy restaurant gifting suite situation at mm -hmm. times and I got to go to it which is where I learned about Mr. Charlie's LA and also smoked some great THC design flower. Fuck yes. Yeah. Cool so all around. Well let's be sexy people this year. Yeah let's be hella sexy. I'm off to a great start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me too. You have chocolate on your phone. I mean listen. And I'm a molester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah fantastic. I do want to like work on being you know that's what, like I this month you know, stepped away from all of my social media and I'm really trying to start my days very intentionally um, without any sort of like screens and all that kind of stuff. And I'm already, you know, I'm like four days in to this new reg regime, regimen, whatever it is um, that I'm going to try and keep up for a month. And it is making a difference. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, That's nice. Oh, I wanted to shout out one more thing. What? I totally forgot to shout out Quinn. Oh, fuck Yes. I'm so excited about. You want to like, talk about putting something good in your body? Well, it's also just great because it means that all of our friends who listen in places where you can't get, they're not one of those two in three Americans where you don't have access to legal cannabis, or you're just far away from a weed store. Like there are plenty of places in California. There's 68 percent of Californians who don't have access to a retail store. Wait, what? California is like a state, isn't it? And that, it's like a state that people are like, "Dang, California!" Yeah. It's a dang state. 68 percent of Californians don't have access to a legal weed store, but they can order Quinn. To be delivered. And the reason that Quinn can deliver is because it's sourced from hemp. So they're an all cannabinoid um, product that you can have delivered straight to your door. And they're doing great stuff. 200 milligram syrup, which is. You enjoyed it? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And um, great vapes, good. Like it's just like great product. And that we should be clear, they're they're sourcing uh, Delta Nine THC from hemp, which is the same t uh, cannabinoid that we know and love in regular cannabis. And so it's that that's the effect that they are going for with their alt cannabinoid uh, products. And it's it's really cool. I mean, I'm, it's very forward thinking. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say like I love a loophole where the public wins. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's really what it is to me. Because when you said two thirds of Americans are in a legal weed state, I was uh -huh. like, fucking great. But then when you think of it the other way, it's one third that isn't. And right. then to hear about the 68%, it's like, oh, no, a majority of this country doesn't have the access that they should have. So Correct. places like Quinn uh, are not only dynamite, use code weed and grub for 25% off, but also <laughs> like the idea of access is still so far away from what I thought it was. And I think too that, you know, it's a little bit misleading to say that two and three Americans, because two and three Americans now lives in a state that has access to legal weed. But then, yeah, like in California, you live in the state, but you still don't have access because of the lack of stores. And there are plenty of other places like that. Or maybe you're in Alaska and, you know, you only get mail by float plane once a week yeah. <laughs> where, you know, cannabis is legal. So it's just, it's neat that um, Quinn has figured out a way to, to be able to ship this product sourced from hemp to all 50 states. Um, and they it's... wanted us to say that if you are in Alaska and you want to order some Quinn, when they do that biplane drop, they will attach a tiny parachute to it and it will land directly on your doorstep and ring the doorbell for you on its way down. And That's that is so a nice. guarantee from Quinn. Great. Thank you so much for hooking our Alaska listeners up with a personal uh, plane drop delivery. Yep. Parachuted. Right to your door. <laughs> <laughs> Shout that's... out Michaela. What's up? Yeah. What up, yeah. Michaela? Yeah. No doubt. Everyone go to Coots. We're going to rain Quinn down across Coots's roof. Yep. It's going to be fantastic. Ice Beard Comedy's going to be there. Fat Trophy Wife's going to be there. All of our friends. <laughs> Captain Quick Pick. Yep. Heck yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, wild. So we have a far way to go, but there's places out there that are doing their part to give everyone access that wants it. That's right. Word. I'm all about that. I just want everyone to get everything that they want and deserve. That's like, really it. Yeah. I, well, I feel like our guest is on the way to getting everything that she deserves for sure. She works her ass off and thank God she's really funny while doing it. RVIB. Very important, bud. Carmen Morales. Um, I've known Carmen for... 
three days now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> like quite a while now. And uh, we got to do the Gateway Show together. That's where we first met, was hitting the road with Billy Anderson, his tremendous show, The Gateway Show. If it comes to your city, you got to go. And um, she just crushed every night. And I was like, who the fuck are you? And now she has an HBO special coming out. Like, yo. Yeah, it's fucking cool. It was so great to hang and, um, you know, feel a little overly familiar with her because I've seen her perform so many times. And she has that vibe where you see her on stage and you're like, I fucking know you. And then I came in today into the studio to say hello. And I was like, hi. And she kind of looked at me and I was like, oh, we haven't met. And she was like, <laughs> no. And I was like, oh cool because we're friends though right like yeah yeah overly familiar I, that's yeah, awesome that was my vibe because she's just so fucking awesome and so goddamn funny are you so, friends now i hope so i mean i i i feel like one more time we need to hang out one more time and then we'll be friends yeah yeah a non-work hang a non-work hang exactly that's yeah we'll up. do a mullet hang of some kind we'll have some kind of uh, work up front yeah. so we can party in the back i'll be like doing t-shirts in the back while you two hang out or something maybe we'll come over and put lampshades on your light bulbs for you mike <laughs> I'm going to suggest that. <laughs> Stick around to hear what that's about. Yeah. Uh, all right. Without further ado, here's our interview with Carmen Morales. Coming to you from Top Tree Studios. What's happening, Carmen? Hi. How's it going? Thank you uh, so much for having me. Long time listener, first time caller. Very nice to be here. Yeah. Do you mean that? You're happy to be here? I am genuinely happy to be here. Because you had a whirlwind trying to get here. Yes. Because the 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 montage <laughs> of misfortune that happened before I got here. Um, I'm I'm happy to be anywhere. So uh, I'm not taken away from how cool this is, but I am happy to not be in a plane for sure. Was it like Indiana Jones when he shows the map and it goes yeah. to like 18 different destinations yeah. before you get here? Turns out there's a lot of shit that happens on those maps. They don't include it. Uh, I guess they don't, the have a, they don't have the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be really funny to cut to Indiana Jones and he's like, legs are to his chest and he's wearing a mask and he's yeah. just like God, in smoke. line at tsa <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> should have got the tsa pre i should have got fucking tsa pre yeah indiana jones would never get clear yeah no. Get clear out. <laughs> there's no way wait so you're coming from the east coast over to the west coast and then kind of leaving us and going directly to another destination yes wild <laughs> <laughs> a lot of moving a lot of logistics happening right now it was like i was in seattle i flew to florida i was in florida for two hours oh my God. Then, I, then i flew to atlanta and because i like my flight got to we got stuck on the tarmac for like two hours uh. and then i missed my connection flight and then i just stayed in atlanta and then i had to take another flight to get here today well, but luckily they found one i was still early enough i could what? Have so you good. smoked any weed since you landed? <laughs> Can we offer you some <laughs> cannabis? Yeah. yeah. Please. Yes. Take that, Jet Blue, or okay. whatever you flew on. This yeah. is this is really how you fly high. We've got these uh, house plant pre rolls. Uh, this is ice fog, which is a peanut butter breath lava cake. I love it. Cross. Every time I smoke house plant, I like sweep. Or you, I do dishes. Like it's really perfect for chores. Oh, I thought you were talking about like curling. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can still do that with a Swiffer, right? You just yeah. pretend you're curling. Sweet. Oh, with like my little dust mm -hmm. buddies mm -hmm. <laughs> right into the dust pad? Mm -hmm. That's really fun. Oh, yeah. This is... This what is, is this, Mary Jane? Uh, didn't I just, just say what it just was? said it. Oh, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Already? How much did you smoke before Jesus, I got Mike. here? <laughs> Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. Wow. Oh, man. So, Carmen, you're a great comic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how long, you've been, Sweet transition, You've been bro. touring for a really, really long time. Yes. Some um, might say too long. I don't know. Some might say that uh, now you have a pretty big cosign coming up soon. Yeah. Are you allowed to talk about it? Yes, I'll talk about it. All right, let's I mean, talk. I don't know if I, I didn't ask. Well, fucking, let's talk about it. I guess we'll it. find out. You heard it here first. What, what, <laughs> what's the exclusive? Um, I am, I'm releasing something on HBO. It's my first big time, uh, you know, first uh, time on TV that's uh, mattered. <laughs> Whoa. Like not cops. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Shut up, Michael. I thought you weren't going to bring that up. <laughs> when did you film it? When is it coming out? I filmed it uh, in Chelsea, uh, New York City, Manhattan. Um, at the Chelsea Music Hall, and we filmed it in uh, November, uh -huh. and uh, which I guess I found out this is like a pretty fast turnaround, which is cool. Um, but it'll be out April first. Holy April shit! First, Evil Fools Day. If if this what if they, if they're fucking with me, <laughs> and this is <laughs> and find out they're just really big practical jokers, we're like, come on, this will be a good April Fools joke. 
Wow. That would be but, fucked up. Yeah, yeah that, that would be so fucked up. That would be real mean. Yeah. yeah. Is it uh so it's your first special? Yep. On HBO. It is. Is it how long is it? It's uh 15 minutes. Nice. It's yeah. perfect. That's a yeah. perfect. A- yes. <laughs> I mean, Quibi <laughs> built an entire billion dollar app around the that amount. Of- I mean, maybe not. I wouldn't say it's cuz that they're closed now, aren't they? Right. Oh, right. Sorry. That was bad. Maybe not uh a- <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that who your saying- first special no, is going to be? I'm with? just <laughs> I'm just saying they thought 15 minutes was. Listen, I got an hour coming out on CISO in three years. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty stoked about it. Hell yes. What's it called? Uh, it's called Entre Nos. It's me and uh, another friend of mine, uh, also a comedian, very funny, Alfred Robles. He goes out on the road with um, Gabriel Iglesias all the time. Hilarious. Vatos con gatos. He's He's so rad. So it was cool to do it. Like doing these things are always fun and weird, but it's like super fun when you can do it with somebody you like yeah. especially you know somebody you know one and then somebody you actually enjoy because then it's like yeah it's cool. yeah you got somebody in the foxhole with you does that make do sense? you feel, do you feel like can i ask you questions about just like comedians sure. and community because i'm not a, i'm not a comedian and so i just i'm a total observer from hanging out with mike and going to shows i feel like the the community is so strong but also so fraught and fractured like it must be great to just like find your person in comedy. Sure. Oh, I mean, uh, I've always been the the floater arounder. So I, there was always people that I I uh, I'm the I'm like one of those connectors as mm-hmm. far as like like a, a social situation. You know. Oh, you gotta know this person. This they gonna you guys gotta know a thing. You guys both you guys both like Dunkaroos, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, doing yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> so I never had a problem with like, uh, but I'm also I'm not delusional and think that like comedy's my family. No, no, like you have a real family. So, um, but I do love comedy, like it's my family, like yeah. it's equal. Yeah. Which is wait, do you like the lame. people in comedy or do you like comedy? No, no, I like comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't make any mistakes. No, 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 no. There's well, the thing about like a lot of comedians is a lot of them are batshit crazy. Some of them, you know, very mentally ill. Some of them just a little bit. And the funny thing about that is people love it when uh, you act out mentally ill in a funny way. Um, but then if you act out in a mentally ill way, not, they're like, what is happening? Mm. What? And it's like, oh, do you thought we were pretending that we were crazy for this? Uh, so it's just like, uh, you know, I was ra- raised by a mentally ill dude. So I'm also like way more sympathetic, I think, uh, towards that than yeah. maybe the average person would be. Do you, is So your comedy springs from family first, from your like growing up um the the things i talk talk shit about i'm sure yeah why wouldn't i yeah um (laughs) (laughs) does it and is this your dad my dad yeah does he watch your comedy uh he does begrudgingly now Hmm. yeah sure it's i didn't let him see me probably until i was like three or four years in yeah that was the first time he saw me how did how did he feel hearing himself be talked about on stage he doesn't like it oh yeah same with my family he, don't, he doesn't like it at all. But he was also like, when he was young, he went to like a Don Rickles show and they, he didn't know what that was. Oh, no. Because um, he was, you know, a Cuban immigrant. He didn't know shit about American comedy by any means. And he went with his uh, old teacher that he used to live with for a while, uh, him and his wife. Like, they took him to this comedy show and it was Don Rickles. My dad, like, almost punched Don Rickles because he was started busting his balls. And then my dad was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Why are you talking to me like that? And then he got up and left because he was like, I was going to punch that dude. I was going to punch that guy. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm glad you didn't, but I kind of wish you did, you know, just so. <laughs> what a story. <laughs> wow. Uh, keep talking about your dad. Cause you have some, I, I mean, they're very funny bits, but also sorry you went through that. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's the, I always talk about, because I think the, I think you can talk about fucked up things, regardless of how touchy they are. You just got to be able to figure out a way to make it palatable, you yeah. know, to make it listenable. When people are like, uh, crazy, that means they're not com- like, and of course you could make people cringe on purpose, but. I think what's cooler is being able to talk about something and then people still feeling comfortable, you know? And you can't do that until you're comfortable with it. So, because I remember trying to do these jokes years ago and it just made people uncomfortable. And it was like, but it was because I wasn't ready to talk about it. 
And nobody talks about that, what you're talking about. Like, I have, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone put into words what you just said, that you need to be comfortable before yeah. t- telling that. Yeah. Because when you're there and I'm like, oh, my dad tried to blow us up. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's obviously I'm not uh, comfortable with that yet. So, and people will sense that. So, uh, so yeah, it took me you know, processing my own shit and uh, figuring it out. And, uh, and then now it's funny, you know? But I think the darker the thing is, the fun, the sillier the thing is that you juxtapose it with to make it more interesting. That's like, like I talk about my being raised in a cartoon because my dad, uh, you know, came at me with a sledgehammer, tried to build a bomb. I, I was raised by Riley, Wiley Coyote. Like I was. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that joke. I've been, yeah. I've been on TV a long time. Yeah. <laughs> meep, meep. Yeah, that's my favorite tag. Yep. That gets everyone laughing. That's so great. Uh, why is he like that? Oh, because he's a uh, he's a bipolar one, I think it is. So he just changes. He'll change moods aggressively in a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Like I remember one time I came home and he was like in bed. He didn't feel good. He was sick, and then he asked me for like investment papers or something, or he wanted to look at his retirement plan or some shit like that. And I brought it in there, and he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna throw up." I was like, "Oh, your portfolio is that bad?" And he like sent me to my room because he was so fucking mad at me. And I was like, "Come on, <laughs> come on!" <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Who's doing portfolio comedy? Yeah, exactly. Out here? Come on. I was like 11. I'm doing, I'm doing investment jokes. Where, 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 where is that kid? <laughs> is that how you protected yourself your whole life? What? Just being like mad funny and just building that as oh, your Oh, yeah, armor? yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to hurt you if they're laughing. Word. I got to tell you, Mary Jane, because as, as soon as I got picked up Carmen from the comedy store, mm-hmm. and as soon as she got in the car, we started making jokes about your sister mm-hmm. uh, who just passed. Yeah. And I'm so sorry that that happened in your life. <laughs> right. But also, we just started busting balls about it and laughing the whole way here. And it felt so good because I didn't want, I didn't want to, I wanted to be kind and like show that I like really, not only do I like you, but like that's such a fucking. Bad yeah, thing it's in a your bummer. Life. Yeah. yeah. But we all as know soon it. as you started laughing and cracking about it, I was like, ooh, this is good yeah <laughs> that's fucking great well that's that's one thing i will say about as far as comedi- the community part of comedians is because of the, the kind of thinking that we do where we're trying to find something funny and something shitty or fucked up or whatever that when you're not around them for like i've just been around my family and everybody's just sad there's no trying to look at it from another trying to find those silver linings anywhere you possibly can there's nobody to do that with. So the second I saw, like, I haven't made a joke about my sister at all. I made, I've tried to make two jokes with my family and both of them bombed incredibly bad. So the second I saw another comedian, I was like, uh, <laughs> here's all the funny things I thought, all the fucked up thoughts I had. Isn't that funny? It's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because <laughs> then it's just like, look at how I've thought about this. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be hard when um when you go through some shit and then um everybody looks at you differently, right? Like that's fucked up. Yeah, they just, you know, everybody's just sad because uh, you know what I think that it is is they're so terrified of that kind of pain that even when they're near it they're like, "Ah, ah I'm sorry." Yeah. It doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> and they need to, and they need to make sure that you're the other. Like it's, it's, it's you. Like I remember I had this crazy fucked up thing happen to me and this girl who could never fucking remember my name came running up to me at this party and she's like, I remember you now. You're that tragic girl who had that fucked up thing happen to you. And I was like, oh, what? And it was just, and it was so crazy to me because it was like, she just needed it to be fully not her. Like nothing bad had happened to her. And she was like, oh my God. It was such a weird thing. I just feel like that other, like that. People need to put you at arm's length. Get it out of right? here. Right? Yeah. Get yeah, away from you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's just it's just like it's any kind of the thing is it's it's a definite negative. You know, mm-hmm. there's plenty of things that I think you could eh, work around. But when everybody wants to have a good time, eh, a definite negative is going to change that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's why a lot of people get reclusive and stuff like. You don't want to bother anybody. As somebody that's a people pleaser, you just end up like turning inward. But uh, but there's also, I think it helps to be around people where you have to be aware of how sad you're getting. You know, by pulling it together, it's kind of like a reminder that you can pull it together. 
Is yeah. that too is that too high of a thought? No, Fuck no, it's, love okay, it. Okay, I just didn't know awesome. if I was in a rabbit hole. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think this is like what this pod is about, at least for me. Yeah. It's like real shit like this. Yeah. Exactly right. I mean, <laughs> right before we started recording, we were talking about setting the table for yourself for breakfast and like oh, treating yeah. yourself, like setting your like I've been doing this with our friend Natalie. Every morning we send each other a picture of like I set the table, I served myself food on a plate, and I sat down and like just breathed and ate like a like a, person like a person who cares about myself for a yeah. moment. And that was such an, and I think it ties into exactly what you're saying. Like I'm pulling it together for me. Yes. First thing in the morning. And that's so fucking helpful. Well, I've just been alone for so long. Like you have to figure out a way to do that for yourself. Like I've spent so much time, like, dude, I li- they lived out of my fucking Saturn for six years. Like I've spent so much time with me. Like we've been through this, you know? So it's, there's always those kinds of self conversations that got to happen. But, uh, but yeah, dude, I was a game changer for me. I was doing the same thing when when like the lockdown shit was happening. It was just like I would just shove food in my face. It was just how I was like I felt like shit, right? And then I made a conscious effort. I was like, what if I just made food for myself? And like, yeah, the plated and uh, you know, like look like, at that, put a little sprig of something on top. Nice. Oh, like, okay, well, look who gives me shit, right? <laughs> and like, I would feel better after my meal, hands down. It's not like, uh, uh, it's like, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love eating roast chicken in my underwear over the sink. <laughs> oh, for sure. I fucking do. <laughs> I've eaten many of a rotisserie <laughs> with my underwear. Hold the whole roast and like bite the breast? No, man. No, I you rip pick it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just noticed that my phone has ice cream on it from when I went to bed last night <laughs> with ice cream. <laughs> Like, I'm not always setting the table and treating oh. myself nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> little bed ice cream? Like, what flavor is was that fucking, in? Oh, my God. It was one of those tiny little, it's like a mini cone mm. from Trader Joe's. Chocolate. So good. Oh, like a, a drumstick? Like a, oh, yeah, like, a, like the, but a little, little one. Little guys. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. A little bedtime ice cream. Those are little lies. I like to call those. The devil sells those. <laughs> Because it's like, oh, it's little. It's <laughs> tiny. I'll eat six. It's <laughs> little. <laughs> it's a little baby. You're supposed to eat them by the handful. That's why they made them so small. <laughs> Do you know what's funny about that? It's because when I eat like six of those, I picture them incinerating, like going into the acid of my stomach. I picture mm. it like it's a volcano and magma. And so I imagine <laughs> if I eat six, like as they're going down, they're just incinerating and they disappear and never count. Yeah. <laughs> Just negative calories. Negative. Because nice. of the acid in your stomach. Yeah. I picture something entirely different. I was like, if you eat six of them, I just thought they started stacking on each other, making a really big ice cream. <laughs> like, a, like a bunch of ice cream cheerleaders. That's what I thought. Fuck yeah. <laughs> How did you get it on the back of your phone? I don't know, man. I just noticed before we started recording that I had this chocolate smear and I looked at it and I was like, what the... I could either it could be two things. It could either be cat shit because my cat literally. Wow, that's unfortunate because I think you just licked your finger to clean it off. <laughs> I did that's, well. I was I like, hope. I sniffed it and then I knew. It was okay, ice it was cream. chocolate. Yeah. So, um, but I went, either that or your cat's having way too much sweets. <laughs> <laughs> this poor cat. He's so old. He just doesn't. It know is what's true happening. when he stands up, stuff kind of falls out sometimes. <laughs> he's, for he's, real, yeah. If know? for that, if you lived that long, your pockets would be full too, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> He's the only cat that I've ever heard fart. Oh my god! I know it's wild. He uh, yeah. They, it's usually just yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> dainty. This this was like a full on like <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. He was straining. He was straining, and then he farted. It was anyway. anyway oh, this was not old clap man move. Yeah, old dudes do that all the time. <gasps> Can I send you a picture of his back legs? It looks like he's wearing baggy trousers trousers with suspenders. <laughs> You got to get one of those news newsboy caps. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, man. So, yes, ice cream, not cat poop. And I just, I, I don't know. I went to bed with an ice cream and I woke up. Uh, I guess I ate it before I fell asleep. <laughs> I'm not sure there was an edible involved. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. What's your, re- re- what's your sleep regimen right now? Um, edible and then sleep. <laughs> That's so, it. How many more. milligrams do you take to go to bed? Like 10. I'm a lightweight. I, yeah, I'm a lot, when it comes to edibles, I, I could smoke bone after bone after. Well, well, I mean, hanging with the dudes, they, they do that, you know, they do that TikTok thing where they're like, look, I put a whole eighth in this backwoods. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of backwoods. I'll smoke them, uh, but I'm not, uh, I'm not 
I feel you. Do you I don't like them. You don't like blunts? I like blunts. I don't like backwoods. I think backwoods specifically are just too harsh on the back end. It's like, what am I? It's like, um, yeah, it's like. A, <laughs> are you a swisher sweetie? Self torture. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, I usually go. I go usually go hemp wraps for as far as blood, hell but, yes. But um, but I do like there's the wine one. There's the wine one. There's two flavored ones. There's the white owl grape, and then there's the there's peach. I think it is a Swisher sweet, but it's one, the wine flavor one. Oh, I'm certain somebody great. will comment on a video of this and be like, "No, it's not that one." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> those are probably my two favorites. Me and my buddy Ricky used to smoke those all the time. And you like flour. Yes. Yeah. Do you dig concentrates too? Do you dab? <sighs> no. It's intense. It's too much. Yeah. I got to go old joke about it. I don't, I'm not trying to morning radio you guys here and just do jokes like they're- We got to hear it. Fresh thoughts. We got to have it. <laughs> Please. Wait, but it's just, let's it's, set it up like we're on okay, balance. Okay, okay, let's okay, do it like okay, we're on okay. balance. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 so anyway, Mary Jane, you were saying- I don't know how Fallon works. Oh, okay. Uh, will you just say go, ah, ha, 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 okay. and then say something to me? Okay. <laughs> Your shirt's great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, you know, speaking of this shirt, what do you think about dabbing? <laughs> I think it's too much. That's what I think. I think it's too much. I think uh, I do. It's uh, it's always too intense. Although I have done done them more recently. I think what was, maybe what was with with the, when we did the Gateway Wait, show. Wait, is this the, the joke Pacific or Northwest. not? Wait, are you? Do yeah, we gotta. I hear thought it. you were doing the joke. Oh, well, yeah, but I started. I could talk to you, you guys. I'm not doing a <laughs> show. I was just wanting to hear the death. Wow. So now you're gonna make I me just watch think you it's on too HBO. Much. <laughs> First of all, we're impaired. Why are we operating a fucking blowtorch? I'm not a pastry <laughs> chef. I shouldn't even fucking own them. I don't know how to weld. Why do I need a fucking torch? <laughs> And then it's also the way it looks when they do it because it's like, because, you know, it's cooked down in like a little schmutz. So it just looks all of us. I've been my since I was 14. I've been trying to tell people that pot is not drugs. And now it looks like fucking drugs. <laughs> Anytime you're doing something out of a rig, it's fucking drugs, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> and it's not like it, the thing is, it's not like pot. Pot didn't need help. It was already thriving. <laughs> I'm just saying I shouldn't have to Walter White my way to weed. I shouldn't have to. You set it on fire, giggle fits. We'll be right back. That's Hell it. yeah. That's a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Should guess. we run it again? Is that all right for everyone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know they call it tree basing? What? What? Have you ever heard that? No. For dabbing? They call it tree basing? Uh-huh. That makes sense. <laughs> I then mean, I was so, well. I for some reason I, I don't know why, but a buddy of mine likes to watch people get too fucked up on like YouTube videos. So he showed me this dude like hot knifing it, and I was like, "Man, I never want to look that fucked up." That was like, <laughs> I used to hang out with a lot of people that did drugs, and then I was like, "Not doing that one. That looks fun. Not doing that one." And it was just how people would look. Like I like fun, mm -hmm. so that I do any drug that is fun, and then the second is not fun. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, out. Like Molly has a heart printed on it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I trust that. Yeah, you know, I don't think I've ever done any of the the newer version of Molly. It's all been like ecstasy. Like I'm old, so I've done old drugs. Mm -hmm. Quaaludes? No, I'm not that old. Jesus, <laughs> barbiturous. Like, 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 <laughs> what am I, Betty White? Jesus Christ! <laughs> fucking Quaaludes. Valley of the Dolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I try one of your cookies, Mary Jane? Oh yeah, I baked <gasps> cookies, guys. Okay, I don't know if they're any good, but please try one. Cookies. Um, yeah. Here, please Grab talk one. about them. Her, I'll her, her. Yeah, which uh which uh which flavor would you go with? Oh, it looks already looks like I went with everything that was in my cupboard when I woke up this morning. Oh, nice shit. and everything but the kitchen sink. Cookie. It's got pecans or pecans, depending on where you're from, I guess. Uh mm. cherries, uh coconut, and chocolate. And they mm. might not be good. I feel like they're dry. They are dry, I can tell. They're dry. Yeah. But I love chocolate. Sorry. <laughs> I love a cabinet cookie. Oh, dry as fuck. Sorry. Yeah, they're dry. Mm. But it's a good cabinet cookie. Well, I did my best with what I had. And that's, you know, 
Also, you woke up this morning and made cookies, so thank you. I did. You're welcome. Thank you for eating them and not being mad about Dude, it. Dude, the Fuck flavor no. is great. Thank you. Yeah, and also I, I would like I I've been recently thinking about putting cookies in a cereal bowl because I've I've heard a lot of people talk about that. Yeah. I feel like this is like a perfect crumble it in a cereal bowl cookie with a little milk. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you eat a yeah. cookie like it's granola. Yeah, that's a good way to lie to yourself. I'm about it. <laughs> yeah. I actually feel like that this crumbled in a bowl with some oat milk over it. That'd delicious. be the way to go. A little drizz, drizz mm -hmm. of some yeah. fucking mm -hmm. yogurt or something. Or throw that bitch in a blender and make yourself a cookie smoothie. Mm -hmm. um, you mean a milkshake? Co yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, it wasn't any ice cream. It was just milk and cookies. Oh, I was like three steps ahead. I was playing 4D chess on that <laughs> fucking blender. <laughs> well, I fell down on the cookies a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. No, not at all. Thank no, you for making good. them. I did my best. It's not like... <laughs> it's not like It's that. dry. They're dry. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Um, speaking about edibles, though... And cookies and delicious things in general. You were saying you like you're a low doser when it comes to yeah consuming weed that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, could, I could smoke it all day, no problem. But if I take anything over ten, it's just too much. Mm -hmm. So I love those little mints, those little five milligram mints. Those are the best. Yeah, because I can still go about my day. Yeah, I mean I'm also a big mushroom person, so I I usually do mushrooms more now during the day than so, magic mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Nice, a daytime mush. Mm -hmm. What's but that microdose, like? not yeah. like uh, it's great. Imagine like not going into the day hating it. Is it enough <laughs> so that you're like, I mean, because I'm reading a lot about microdosing right now and how some people are sort of it's arguing so cool. That the more like, legal it gets, the more we can learn about it. It's, so we're not all theory based. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the best. And so some people are sort of saying like the placebo effect might be in place here, and other people are saying, well, it's definitely helped me. So fuck you. Mm -hmm. And so your experience is like, are you taking enough to? Sort of be aware of it, or is it tr like? I mean, I like to, I like to dip a toe outside of micro. Mm -hmm. I used to take two and go work at the comedy store just so I didn't hate the general public. Yeah. Hey, come on, let me see your ID, buddy. Who's here to some comedy? You, know? <laughs> you have just like drunk, entitled tourists trying to like weasel their way into a sold out show. No, no, no! <laughs> don't make me get security. Come on, yep. you can't go in. That's just patience. That's I don't have. I'm a very, uh, very impatient person. I talk fast on stage. I'm, go, I'm always going fast. Mm -hmm. I do. I procrastinate, so I'm always doing something fast. I feel like that job. You worked the comedy store. How long did you do that? Um, three years. Man, that's got to be some. You've seen some things. Yeah, you've dealt with some people. Not as much. I mean, we had the big muscly guys. I might like we're not really security. We just have the. It's just a tradition. It's it's basically the store pays us to be bums. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> which you, I appreciate. Can you share with everyone listening the kind of lore of the store? I guess is a good way to say it because I'm going to be honest, like. Hearing that you got a job there, I was like, oh, "What's it like? Yes. <laughs> That's so cool because it's 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 heralded, right? Like I would argue it's the m most famous comedy club in the world. Yeah, everybody knows the comedy right? store. Besides yeah. Madison Square Garden, or yeah, something, right. Like, you yeah, know? that's it. Hey, listen, they do more than comedy there, though. So it's like an all arts open mic. Okay, that's like different. Oh shit! At, the, <laughs> at MSG, that's awesome. They got music there. They got music. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> and hockey. Really? Yeah. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is the what? Yeah, like what is it like to? How do you land a gig at the comedy store? You sort of you must um, obviously. Well, they have a cool thing called the it's a door guy program where um, the people that check IDs and see people and you know tell people to not put out their phones, like change the marquee, all that stuff. They traditionally were always comedians, like Mitzi used to do that back in the day and just hire. So, so basically, comedians could just kind of be there all the time and still get paid. And it was always people that they were like developing talent for. And um, the the previous talent coordinator, uh, Mr. Adam Egit, he, um, I just kept going to open mics and they and they, I kept getting up and I kept doing well. So I just one day I just kind of asked him. I was like, Yeah, do I? How many do I have? How many times do I have to do this? <laughs> Like and care, or can I treat this like an open mic? Like just so, and because I was, if I was going to get up there, I'm going to have a good time, do some new shit, right? Get Fuck experimental. Yeah. But if you're trying to like, you know, get someone to give you work, you do the good shit. You do the things that's prepared, more thought out. So I was just basically asking, can I start going off the rails here, or do I need to stay? You know, keep showing you that, I, and then. He was like, you're really funny. He's like, I just don't have any room for you right now in the development. 
And then like, I think a few weeks went by and then he asked me if I would consider working there so then I could go up there all the time. And I was like, sure. And I was like, as long as you let me go be a real comedian, because I'm already a real comedian. Because I was already, you know, I've been making money doing stand up full time for like six years. Wow. So it was like, which was cool because it's, it's nice that the first job I've had in fucking <laughs> 10 years is at, is at a comedy club. So they get it. <laughs> yeah. That's Because there was, it's, I had already had a tour book. So like, I didn't come to work for like, Three months. Ugh. Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. While still getting to be on the road, while yeah, headlining yeah. all over the country, <laughs> and then having, I mean, we were kind of joking about it, but having a home. Yeah, it was, it really to. was. It really did turn into a home. And it's, and it's still a fucking cool place. Like, people try to shit on it, but it's usually because, I don't know, maybe they, whatever, they try to think they're better than it. But the comedy score is, is cool and it will always be cool. That's what's up. Um. So it was. You know, I'm honored that they would let me hang out in a place that I th that I hold so fondly. So, and know. now you're doing right by them. You're good. You're you're gonna be on HBO. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be on HBO. Like getting a cosign and having a place like that be like, we fuck with you heavy, mm. but then also giving you the space to follow the career trajectory that you've been. Yeah, on. Yeah, that's the coolest thing you I've know? never. Yeah, that there's usually in a, in a business sense, there's usually the the club will start wanting more from you, but they have always been like very they're cool as fuck so and um emily's the new talent coordinator and I'm, i really love what she's doing there too so i'm super fucking proud of her damn what yeah. do you what do you mean by that like what is she doing that's different she books she's booking the, the store and like it's um and she's just putting people up that have kind of not been given some light that i think they deserve and it just it's dope and the vibe there is rad i love the vibe there so yeah yeah it hasn't always been like it is right now yeah no i mean the vibe has been good for years but like right now there's like a chillness to it which is kind of instead of like um it's like it's like if everybody was just smoking weed instead of being coked up nice. it's just a different energy at the party and i and i like it so do you think it is because everyone's smoking weed instead of doing it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> They've just transitioned. Maybe that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> do we got to do the things? I don't, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're great. Um, where's Where do you want people to find you? Oh, uh, CarmenMorales.com for all of your Carmen Morales needs. Um, follow me at the funny Carmen uh, on all the assorted social media. I'm so sorry that you still have to hold that cookie. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's just I want to be able hand to hand your phone. Will yeah. you hand her your phone, please? Here, put it on my phone. <laughs> oh, thanks. Where the sorry. chocolate goes. <laughs> <laughs> I just got some on my finger, so there will be some reapplied to your so phone sorry. just to keep it consistent. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, watch my thing. It's only 15 minutes. What are you doing? What are you, busy? Watch, it's 15 minutes. It's called Entrenos. It's on, it'll be on, it, streaming on HBO Max, and it's me and, uh, and Alfred Robles, and, uh, I'm really, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I saw it, and I think it's fucking good, so. Oh, I yeah. hope you guys do. So, if you don't like it, that, it's definitely you, because I did a good job, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> April 1st. And also, every time you're in town, anytime you're in town, anytime you want to come hang with us, this is exactly what I love to do is like listen to funny people. Tell me, <laughs> tell me about their lives while we smoke. I don't weed know. The food. chocolate on the phone case was pretty funny. That was <laughs> pretty funny. Me being a fucking hot mess, <laughs> which is daily. So, yeah, but I feel like if we've learned one thing today it's from Carmen, it's like, once you're okay with it, you can laugh about it. So if you go on stage and start doing chocolate phone case comedy, I think it's going to come from a real place and hit pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> people like that. Yeah. People like to not feel like they have to be anything. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't want to hold anyone to a high standard. Just be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but be an honest mess. An honest an mess. An honest mess. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. This has been fucking awesome. Please come Thank back you guys so much for having time, me. Anytime. Follow us. Uh, at Weed and Grub on Instagram, WG at Weed .com. Leave a review, leave a five star click, follow Carmen. Um, are, are you doing your pod? Yeah, yeah. And at No Sir Pod. 
It's really no, fun. Sir, I don't like it. We got in an argument on her podcast on No Sir Pod about uh, lampshades because you know how I don't have any lampshades <laughs> in my place. Oh uh, yeah, about how serial killer that is that he has yeah. no fucking lampshades on any of the lights in his house. I don't go over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that place is scary. Why you needed that bright? You sure you cleaning up blood out of the creases of a fucking wood foot flam- floorboard? Oh yeah. my god! Now the next thing you're going to tell me is anytime someone walks in, I go, "Oh, finally!" And then I lock the door as if that's a bad <laughs> thing. <laughs> God damn. You did, you did have that joke about how much blood your bathtub could hold, Mike. All, all of it. <laughs> Literally all wow, of it. I it's did all, the math. It's all coming clear now. We well, have... yeah, it's got this thing called a drain. So it just, you can keep refilling it and refilling it <laughs> and refilling it. All... It's so scary. You're so scary. You look nice, but wow. <laughs> uh, bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> uh...